As an architect, I know a few tools. The most important one, visualizing future scenarios. This film from 1991 shows time passing as a year go by in Bördfjord, a vacated fishing village up in the north of Norway. What did this film shows me is how we so naturally relate time and place through the observations of seasonal changes. To live and work up here, you would know how to plan ahead and predict for stormy weather and days of gloomy daylight. These skills are embedded in local culture and tells us where to build, when to harvest and what to wear. These skills to predict and adapt is exactly what we need to build upon to find the solutions for the future. The future being zero emission or maybe translated to something more comprehensible, like life in balance with nature. Weather versus climate. This is a serious issue. As architects, we work with weather data in our models to optimize for energy use and to find materials suited for the location. But to foresee climate conditions generations into the future, we need to rely on scientific research. What is exactly what the IPCC has provided with this report? Global warming at 1.5 degrees. Let's implement this as a target in our planning tools. The big picture of climate gas emissions relating to human activities can be seen like this graph. Visualizing the head of an architect, not a scientist. Balance equals zero, meaning society secured by renewable energy and where the use of natural resources is limited to what our ecosystems can sustainably provide. The uphill slope represents climate gas emissions in the post-industrial era. The peak, the downhill slope, and the mirrored curve represents actions, solutions, and designs that will safeguard us into the future. So, how can this apply to the actions within the building industry? This graph translates the target into a declining budget of climate gas emissions related to the square meter of building in Norway. The budget shows energy consumption, the emissions from manufacturing of materials, construction phase and a waste scenario for dismantling of the building after two generations of use, all summed up to the year of construction. On the negative side of zero, we rely on technology that can extract from the atmosphere what we have already emitted, maybe transforming carbon molecules into matter. The bullet point represents the technical requirements by law in Norway today. This bullet point is a best practice example of a new construction. A commercial building made out of low carbon concrete and steel, a plus energy standard built with today's technology. Powerhouse Bratterkaja, located in Trondheim at a latitude of 63 degrees. With a design optimized for solar power harvesting, this project ensures a surplus of renewable energy that is fed into a neighborhood smart grid. The building was awarded Fast Companies Innovation by Design Award this year. So, this bullet point is a reference project of the same kind but has a lower material emission. We can see that by changing to wood constructions and reducing the amount of technical equipment, we can reduce quite a lot. These two projects, Harvard House Zero in Cambridge, Boston, and Gulag Torg in Oslo, are both planned with natural ventilation, amongst other passive strategies. Less technical installations means more space and more volume for people. And it might even provide a more healthy indoor climate. Knowledge on local climate data will then be an even more important driver in our design process. This bullet point promotes the use of existing structures. With the foundation and superstructure already in place, material emissions are radically reduced. Powerhouse Sherbu in the Oslo region is a refurbishment project of a 1980s office building. The interdisciplinary design team managed to bring down the energy consumption by 90% relating to the existing 
which also tells us that the way we work is a solution in itself. As you can see, we still have a way to go to find zero or balance. As you can also see, best practice projects have a short time in the spotlight. We are into an era that requires a continuous state of reinvention. So where do we go? This film shows the production of a chair made out of ocean plastic waste. When leaving the fossil energy in the ground and having seen the first recipes for a carbon negative concrete, amongst other groundbreaking innovations, we still need to act to protect what is left of wild nature and natural resources. The point of departure for future designs is from materials that are already extracted in the loop. This again demands a circular economy that promotes reuse and denies waste. On behalf of all creative, problem-solving disciplines, we are ready to forecast what the future then might look like. Thank you.